Displaying read time on your blog posts is one of those little things that can go a long way on your website. Studies have shown that just by displaying the read time, you can increase engagement by up to 40%. So in this video, I will show you how you can use a little JavaScript to calculate the read time of your Webflow blogs and articles. Now I know there are many calculators and resources to do this online, but it's nice to be able to do it ourselves. With that said, we're going to customize it a little bit, have some fun. We're not just going to simply calculate the read time based on the words of our article. After all, there is a reason why the abbreviation TLDR became a thing. People don't like reading large walls of text. So let's also take our images into account and add about 10 seconds for each image. I'm adding 10 seconds because I'm figuring that's the average time someone stops to look at an image as they're reading an article. So to write it, you could write it directly in Webflow, but I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code. And let's start off by declaring two variables, words per minute and seconds per image. Words per image will represent the average number of words a reader can read in a minute. And I've seen various numbers for this online, so just to make it a nice balance in the middle, I'm just going to set it to 250. And then seconds per image will represent the average amount of time a reader will glance at an image. And we'll just set it to 10 seconds. Next, we'll select our blog post, which is going to be the class that has our rich text. So in my case, my rich text is in a class of blog post. This will depend on what you've named yours, but I named mine blog post for this tutorial, just so it's easy so we can all understand what's going on. So I'm going to go back into Visual Studio Code and set up another variable. So const blog post equals document. Now that we have our blog post, we're going to find the number of words in the blog post by splitting the text content into an array of words using the split method. So we'll go const words equals and we'll add back and then we'll do the length property. So to summarize what I just did, blog post dot text content is retrieving the text content of the element with the class of blog post. And then split splits the text content into an array of words. And we're using space as the separator. That's why there's the space in between the quotations. And then dot length calculates the number of elements in the resulting array, which is equivalent to the number of words in the text content. Now we're going to have to get the number of images in our blog post by using get elements by tag name. So we'll set up another variable. Now we're going to calculate the total estimated read time for the blog post in minutes. To do this, we'll divide the number of words by the words per minute and add the number of images multiplied by seconds per image divided by 60. We'll then use math floor to round down the result to the nearest whole number and store it in a variable called total minutes. And you could either round up with math, math seal or round down using math floor. We're going to round down because I'm assuming if someone sees a large number for the read time, even if it's an extra minute, it could disincentivize them to read our articles. So we'll go const
Next, we're going to calculate the total estimated read time in seconds. To do this, we're going to multiply the number of words by 60 and divide by words per minute. Then add the number of images multiplied by seconds per image. Finally, we'll select the element in our document that will display the estimated read time using the document query selector and store that in a variable called read time div. So on my page, I have this element right here is read time. And this is where I want it to display our read time data after it calculates it. So for this tutorial, I just named it text block is read time. So on the published site, it's not going to say five minute read. It's going to say what the actual read time is. So back in the Visual Studio Code, and we'll go. So now that we have our basic formula, we're now going to use an if else if statement to update the text content of the read time div based on the value that we got here. And now you'll notice on my if else if statement, I used a back tick before estimated read time and not a single quote. That's important because we're using template literals. So if you're getting an error or it's not working, you want to make sure you're using the back tick for this section of the, of the code and not a single quote. So I'm going to copy this code and paste it back into Webflow. Go to my blog post settings. Before body tag, open up some script tags, paste it in. I'll save and publish. And on the live site, should not say five minute read and should display our actual read time. There you go, estimated read time, two minutes. And you're probably thinking it's cool to have the read time on the blog page itself, but I also need it on the home page with the cards of all my other blog posts. Well, we could do it on the home page too. We just need to make some subtle modifications to the code. 
So what we'll do is we're going to go to our home page. So on the home page, I have a grid that has cards of all the blog posts. So what we're going to do is there's many ways to get the content from other pages, but to make it simple, what we're going to do is we're just going to drop in a hidden div inside the card that's going to house our blog content. So in my example right here, I have each card has a class with the name of blog item. So inside of blog item, I'm going to drop in a div that I'm going to hide later on. So I'm going to call this hidden div. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in my rich text. So I'm going to go control E, add in my rich text with my blog content. I'll get the content from my post and I'll give it the same class we used for the other one. So in my case, it was blog post. Now our rich text on the home page, even though it's going to be hidden, has the same class as our page, as the blog page itself. Then we're going to go up to that hidden div we made. We're going to set the display to display none. And then we're going to grab the same code from the other page. So now we have our code from the previous page. We just need to make some little adjustments. So the first thing we need to do is we need to change this const blog post to const cards to select all of our cards on the home page that have a class of blog item. So I'm going to go const cards equals document dot query select. And instead of query selector, I'm going to use query selector all. And instead of blog post, we're now going to find all the elements with the class of blog item. And now we have to add a for loop to iterate over all the elements that have a class of blog item. So I'm going to add some space. I'm going to say for const and then within this loop we need to select the child element that has a class of blog post for each iteration. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another variable and say const blog post home equals card dot Query selector. Now I just have to update these lines to instead of saying blog post to say blog post home. And then I have to update this read time div to instead of doing document query selector to card.query selector. And I have to close the loop. I will save and I'm going to publish. And when I publish, five minute read on our designer should be updated with the actual times. And there you go. That's how you can make your own read time calculator using Webflow and a little bit of JavaScript. Hope this helps. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.